Okay, and our, our uh, next speaker is uh, Amir Golan. He's the Chief uh, Commercial Officer uh, International in the company Day2, and he will talk to us about personalized nutrition. Hi, good morning. I see people from all over the world. So the ones that are coming from the US, uh, happy 4th of July. Thanks for inviting me. Um, I don't have much time. What I'm going to talk about is personalized nutrition. Most of it is based on science. Some of it is more based on our experience. Uh, Day2 is a company that currently work with more than 10,000 clients in Israel and in the, in the US. And feel free to raise your hand and ask questions if something is not um, well articulated. Apple a day keeps the doctor away. Um, how many of you believe that this sentence is right? None of you? One? <laughs> okay, we'll get back to that later. But it's not easy to understand and to know what, what's good, what's the best diet for, for humans. So I'm waking up, I'm exercise, and then I want to eat healthy. Okay, many Israelis will choose rice cake, pircheot in Hebrew, with low-fat cheese, and then the best of the best, the Jaffa orange juice, fresh, squeezed. Is it really healthy for us? Based on our databases, about 85% or more of that will spike dramatically on this combination. And when I'm saying spike, I'm talking about blood glucose level. So they'll think they eat healthy, but actually, their blood sugar level will raise. Why is it uh, not healthy? We'll talk about it in a sec. Best diet. This is the Time Magazine, the cover of the Time Magazine. Different years, completely different recommendations. Is it good cholesterol? Is it good to consume it? Is it bad to consume it? We have good cholesterol, we have bad cholesterol. Oh my God, as a consumer, I have no idea what I should do. How many eggs should I consume a day? Is it, should I eat it at all? It's pretty confusing. But the science is changing, so the recommendation is changing accordingly. And then let's talk about diets. How many diets there are out there? I see some amazing dietitians within the audience. You know this issue, people coming in to you and asking, I want to do the ketogenic. I want to do the Atkins. Explain me about the differences. There are differences, but there is not for mo most of them, there is no long science of that can show the effect for many years. But what we are trying to claim that whatever the diet we're choosing probably as a, as a society, we can make some better choices. You look at these numbers. We're getting more and more overweight, obese, diabetic, uh, and, and also cardiovascular disease and many others. So what can we do different? The science of the company that I'm talking about comes from the Weizmann Institute, which is one of the top research institutions in the world. In addition, this specific science was published in the Cell and Nature, which is one of the top two scientific magazines. Some of our investors in, in day two as a company is uh, Johnson & Johnson, and we also work with the Mayo Clinic as the partners, but also run a few clinical trials with them. Oh, sorry for the designing here. I'm a bad designer. It's my fault. But during this research, what they did, they took 1,000 people. I'm talking about the Weizmann Institute about f uh, six, six years ago. Um, 1,000 people, and they try to profile them, try to learn as much as they can about who are these people. So they collect a lot of information about them. What they're eating, they log their food. What their genetic, the human genetic, the DNA. They sequence their DNA. What's their lifestyle? Are they exercising at all or not? And one of the unique stuff is the microbiome. What's the composition? What's the inventory of the gut microbiome? When I'm talking about gut microbiome, for the ones that are not familiar with that, A, I highly recommend to read about it because this is fascinating. 
this topic going to change the entire world, not just the nutrition world, also the, the uh, healthcare, and basically it's connected with everything. So you look at me now and you, you see a human being, but what you can see is all the microbes that I have within me. And the number of genes that I have within me, uh, some, say, some will say 10 times more, some will say the same number as the human uh, cells. The genome itself, the richness of the microbiome is way higher. If you take all the microbes that we have and you kind of try to put them together, encapsulate them, pretty big, and also weight between two to three kilograms. And this is a new, uh, kind of a new field within science, I would say among the last eight, nine years. And we know it's connected to di digestion, to, to energy levels, to the, our immune system. Um, we don't know a lot about it yet, and it's heavily researched now by basically everybody. But we already know it's connected to how we digest our food. It's connected to, to cancer. It's connected to Alzheimer's. It's connected to an autism. So now these are still early associations between these diseases and the mi gut microbiome. But we know there are some connections. And part of what we're doing in day two, it's also research that. And what they try to, to look at the research when they collect all the data is also how people will spike, blood sugar levels spike, once they're eating a specific food item or a food combination. And they chose this specific biomarker because, A, it's something you can measure versus like uh, insulin, that it's pretty impossible to measure on 1,000 people effectively. And B, today you can do it. So you put like uh, continuous glucose monitoring. There are a few companies that can provide that. And you can read your sugar level every five minutes, blood sugar level. And this gives you a pretty fast biomarker of you just ate something, how it's going to affect your body, how it's going to affect your blood sugar level. In addition, the blood sugar level that respond, what's called PPGR, the post-meal uh, glucose response, is connected in many different science and uh, research with diseases, obviously the metabolic diseases, fatty liver, cancer, and others. So we don't want people to spike. We want them most of the time. We want them to balance their diet in a way that the sugar level won't spike too much. How people measure um, the glycemic index before, I know that today the new, the new uh, school of thought has already changed that, but this was the pretty much the basic. You take different food items and you measure a group of people, how they're going to react from the blood sugar level, and then you do an average. And this is a huge problem. Remember, 10 people, an average. Whoever dealt with statistic, let's put it this way. Take this room, OK? The right side of it could get 10, and the left side of it could get 0. Now the average will be 5. And then you'll ask yourself, is it good for me? Oh, it's 5. So maybe it's OK, maybe not. I'll eat it. For, ten, for, for half of the room, this is disaster. For the other half, it's OK. How do I know? Which half do I belong to? So average is always a problem, but there was no better way to check it unless you prick yourself. So are you going to prick yourself every day unless you, you're a person with diabetic? Probably not. And then during the research, and before the research, actually, there was a, a high eureka moment. The professor, uh, Aran Siegel from Weizmann, he was a bit chubby. And he wanted to lose weight, and he started to exercise. And then, by coincidence or not, his wife, she's a dietitian. And he said, you know what, I want to check this blood sugar level. So he connected himself to a, a, a CGM, and he ate stuff, and he checked the effect. And then he said, you know what, I want to eat an ice cream. It was a Magnum. I, I'm, I don't have any, by the way, I don't have any connection to this company that produced that. <laughs> I don't get any royalties for that, OK? So he ate the Magnum. And it's supposed to, you know, come on, you eat that, it's supposed to spike, isn't it? Flat. Say, so, okay, my device is probably wrong. He replaced the device, he ate another one, he enjoyed it. Flat. And he said, how is it possible? He came back to his wife, what is that? No, no, probably there is a mistake. And then he went to the lab, 
and he gave it to the other people. And then surprisingly, boom. Oh, wait a sec, wait a sec. So it's not supposed to spike. It's supposed to spike and it's not spiking. Or it's not supposed to spike and it's spiking. And then me and this guy are different. Come on, what's going on? He's a scientist, he's a professor, so you know what he decided to do. Okay, he got a grant and then he ran an experiment with 1,000 people. And then he realized, okay, we are different. So each one of us could eat exactly the same food item, but we will react completely different. Now think about all the generic recommendations that we get. Eat that, this is amazing for you. Now, from the sugar level, okay, the, from the uh, glucose perspective, we need to think about it again. There are other elements that we, know, we want to take in consideration, obviously. And then they gave two diets to, to people. One of them was supposed to spike. One of them was supposed to keep it low. And you can't really tell which one is the good one and which one is not because it's personalized. And you can see great stuff here like sushi, pasta, ice cream, many other stuff that probably each one of us will sign off that, that diet. For the bad diet, based on the algorithm that they came up with, this is what you see. It's spiking. Whoever familiar with the, with the numbers, you see this is pre-diabetic and diabetic. And then they gave him the good diet based on the algorithm. This is what they saw. And this is a hard moment from also from commercial perspective. And then the company said, OK, we want to be part of that. And this is another example, rice bowl versus ice cream. Most of the population within this experiment reacted way better on ice cream than on rice bowl. Some of the dietitians that will treat people with diabetes will easily give them whole rice bowl, but they will tell them avoid the ice cream. And basically what they're doing, they're pushing them into the disease more and more. I, 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 and I can't blame, blame them for that because they have no other tools. What we said today, it's don't look just on the sugar level, but look at the sugar level. In addition, look at the calories that you consume. In addition, look at the nutritional values. You know, people come to us, hey, I'm not spiking on ice cream, so I ate ice cream all day. Like, no, are you serious? Yes. No, 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 this is not good. And I'm connected to what you, you, you talked about before. And you need to, to educate people to help them to make the right decision. Remember the apple from before? This is my actual real results, my personal results. For apple, I'm spiking. I get 5.7 on the day two app. I need to add something. So it's also about food combinations. We're not eating just one item most of the time. We're eating breakfast. It's including few items together. When I'm adding nuts, specific nuts, almonds in this case, to my apple, I get a great score. And I can live with that and I can enjoy my apple. If I won't take the, the nuts, I'll spike. I'll feel bad. Okay. They also check the gut microbiome. I won't get into it because I, I don't have much time. We're talking about personalized diet based on gut microbiome. Today, we have many people come with metabolic diseases that want to manage their blood sugar level in a better way. We have people that are just healthy conscious. I want to be healthy. I want to be healthier. I want to do whatever is good for me. We have professional athletes. They want to perform better. This is Omri Kaspi, by the way, the first Israeli in the NBA. He's a, he's a client, and he said, listen, I always ate like pre-game meal, contained pasta with tomato sauce. And then at the second quarter, if, I, if he played, uh, we Israelis were not so good in basketball. So, But no, he's amazing, and I really appreciate what he achieved so far. And he just signed with the Memphis Grizzlies. So he's a great guy and a great athlete. And he changed his entire meal, and he felt way better. Higher energy, better recovery time. Currently, we work with uh, the Olympic Committee in Israel. We work with some professional NBA teams. We work with some professional football teams. And they're all amazed by this science, and they want to check it themselves. If you look ahead, what's the, the future will bring to us? You get into a restaurant. You'll get your entire personalized score next to each item. It's not just will be the sugar score. It will be also based on your objective. This is just an illustration. The day is not so far, and actually, it's already there. We just need to make it happen, but the technology is already solved. This is the future, and this future is tomorrow, okay? Alexa, what should I eat today? 
Alexa, I really feel like eating apple. What should I eat next to it? Oh, I mean, apple is not so good for you. You should add three almonds next to it. Ah, I mean, I'm out of almonds. Should I add it to your cart? And again, I'm not getting any royalties from Amazon as well, but this is the future and it's gonna kill the brands and people, we have so many tens of million people buying these machines, the Google Home or the Alexa, changing the way that people consume everything, especially food. But once you have this knowledge about what's good for me, you'll use it everywhere. This is the app, this is how we work. We collect people, uh, samples, got samples based on stool samples, we're sequencing it, and then after a few weeks we provide them the personal result. They can sort through it, they can get what's right for them. Thank you very much.